Hello, my name is uh, Dr. Graham MacDonald and I'm one of the consultant clinical oncologists in Aberdeen Royal Infirmary. An oncologist is a doctor who uh, specialises in the non-surgical treatment of patients who have cancer. Uh, and typically this involves either radiotherapy treatment, which is the use of x-rays, or chemotherapy treatment, which is the use of drugs to kill off cancer cells. I and my two colleagues, Dr. Bissett and Dr. Hutchin, uh, provide the oncological input uh, for patients with urological cancers in Grampian, Orkney and Shetland. We all work in the anchor unit, which is based in Aberdeen Royal Infirmary and which comprises wards 15 and 17, both inpatient wards, where most of the chemotherapy is delivered, uh, as well as in the radiotherapy department, which lies at the east end of the hospital and which houses the three linear accelerators or radiotherapy treatment machines. To talk a bit more about radiotherapy, uh, some patients are treated with radiotherapy with the aim of curing them of their cancer. In those situations, we typically use uh, a fairly long course of treatment. For instance, for bladder cancer, typically we would use at least 20 treatments over a period of four weeks. And for prostate cancer, we would typically use 37 treatments over a period of seven and a half weeks. Some patients have cancer that is unfortunately incurable and in those patients we still sometimes use radiotherapy to try and improve certain symptoms such as pain or bleeding. And in those situations we typically use a short course of radiotherapy, often just between one and five treatments. For those patients who are receiving curative radiotherapy though, they would be invited to attend the radiotherapy department to undergo a CT planning scan, which is basically just a very short CT scan uh, to cover the area of the tumour and to allow the oncologist to define exactly where the tumour is and to work out how best to treat it with radiation. About a week after that CT planning scan, uh, patients return to the radiotherapy department uh, in order to have what's called a plan check. And this is basically a double check where we take ordinary x-rays to make sure that the radiotherapy beams line up with the patient appropriately. Within a couple of days of the plan check, the radiotherapy treatment course starts. And the course of treatment, as we've said, may take place over a number of weeks. And typically this would be daily, Monday to Friday, for that period of time. Each treatment lasts usually around 10 minutes and it is painless. There are however side effects that can build up through a course of treatment and for patients with bladder and prostate cancer these would typically include symptoms such as fatigue, uh, upset of the bowel uh, as well as some upset of the bladder uh, which may cause the patient to require to pass urine more frequently. What I've described so far is what we call external beam radiotherapy, which is treatment that is delivered from out with the patient's body. For certain patients with prostate cancer, however, there is another way of delivering radiation, and that's by a technique called brachytherapy, or implant treatment. In this situation, uh, radioactive wires or seeds are placed directly into the prostate uh, to deliver the radiation to that organ. While Aberdeen uh, does not provide this service, uh, patients from Grampian, Orkney and Shetland can be referred to the two centres in Scotland that do provide the service, namely Glasgow and Edinburgh. Brachytherapy takes place as a, a day case or a short inpatient stay procedure uh, and is performed under general anaesthetic or spinal anaesthetic. Usually between 20 or 30 needles are used uh, to place the seeds or wires into the prostate and these needles are passed through the perineum which is the skin between the anus and the scrotum. 
Patients who are considered suitable for BRCA therapy typically in include those patients with prostate cancer who have no evidence of cancer out with the prostate, who have few or no urinary symptoms, uh, and patients uh, um, who have had no previous operations in the prostate. What I've talked to, to you about so far is radiotherapy and BRCA therapy treatment, but I'd like briefly to mention chemotherapy treatment, which is drug treatment. This is usually given as an intravenous or drip infusion, but sometimes can be delivered using tablets, depending on the particular chemotherapy regimen that is being used. To give an example, patients with bladder cancer that are being considered for an operation to remove the bladder are frequently uh, advised to undergo a short course of chemotherapy treatment prior to their operation. In this situation, patients would attend uh, as a day case or short inpatient uh, stay in order to receive two drugs that are delivered over a period of about 10 hours. The patient is then discharged home uh, and returns the following week uh, for a booster injection over about half an hour. That procedure is repeated on a three weekly cycle for between three and four cycles in total. Thereafter, the patient would undergo surgery to their bladder. As well as radiotherapy and chemotherapy, there are other treatments that oncologists uh, can deliver. And oncology is a rapidly expanding specialty with new treatments uh, coming available all the time. Because we are committed to improving the outcomes for patients with urological cancers, uh, in the oncology department, we frequently have trials running comparing uh, newer treatments with standard treatments. Depending on the patient's particular uh, clinical case, uh, patients may be asked if they wish to participate in a clinical trial. If you are asked to do so, you will be fully informed about the clinical trial and the pros and cons of going into the trial. And I would stress that all uh, participation in trials is entirely voluntary. Okay, Raymond, well, thanks very much for coming up. No problem. We're no going problem. to talk about your testicular cancer. Okay. Could you perhaps tell us how the disease first presented? Okay, well, I actually had a, a pain in the inside of my left leg, and um, I thought to myself, well, I thought we'd maybe sprained, uh, a sprained my inside of my leg or something. And then I was in the shower and I just I was washing myself and I felt a lump in the top of my testicle. So um, I thought myself I'd better go to the doctor and, and see what it is. So I went to the doctor and uh, he says, oh, I don't know, you actually felt the lump. And he said, I don't think it's anything, uh, but we'll put you to the hospital to get a scan just to make sure. So who did you see? Uh, I went went for uh, I went for a scan um, at the so hospital. It's a, it's a, an ultrasound scan. An ultrasound scan, yeah. And and uh, the doctor there said your testicles get have to be removed. And I thought to myself, oh, here we go. Um, I knew within myself what it actually was, you know. So then you saw one of the surgeons. Yeah, so, uh, we saw. Well, I went actually down to to the clinic and saw one of the the doctors there, and he had a, a feel as well to see. Actually, it was, and he said it was a lump as well, and um, and we got some blood tests and stuff, and uh, and he said uh, yes, it was cancer. Right. So then you had your operation to remove the testicle. That's right. Yeah, an operation to remove the testicle. I think this yeah. did they suggest putting in a prosthesis. Yeah, yeah. We got a prosthetic one uh, put in. I said, well, they were getting they were getting operated anyway, so why not? And uh, the and it actually got infected the prosthetic testicle and a week later I had to go for another operation and get that removed and uh, it's been it's been fine ever since it's been it's been you then had a, a CT scan of your chest and your tummy to yeah. see if the cancer had spread anywhere yeah. else and it did involve the lymph glands in your tummy so we had yeah. to suggest chemotherapy that's right yeah could you tell us about the chemotherapy oh uh, well yourself I was recommended to the four bouts of chemotherapy which uh, which I had and and uh, um, uh, the chemotherapy actually uh, was actually okay. I mean, it was good through the chemotherapy. It, the only time I was really sick was near the end, 
Um, but they, they came within going quite well, actually, I would say. Yes, yeah, so about five, you were in hospital for five days and you had... Yeah, five days, yeah. You had, you had chemotherapy every three weeks. Yeah, and you that's right, yeah. And you were in for five days and had booster yeah. injections. And in between, on a Tuesday, I think it was, I went for... Um, it was just like a top-up. Booster injection. A booster, yeah, yeah and right. on a Tuesday. Yeah. So um, the side effects you had, you had some sickness, I think, which got probably worse. Got as you worse as we went on, yeah, yeah, and I lost my hair. Um, uh, and probably that was probably the worst uh, losing my hair. Oh, so <laughs> that, that, that obviously was temporary. Yes, that's right. Yeah, it's obviously it's grown yeah. back now. So now, d during your treatment, you obviously had blood tests to check these marker levels. Yeah, yeah. Which went back down to normal. I feel that's brand right. new. Yeah, I feel great. Yeah. And you're now back to work. Yeah, back to work again. So.